These are the lovely miniature weaving we're going to be doing today. I've represented the four seasons, so we've got the winter, spring, summer and autumn here. And we're going to focus on making one like this. Once you've learnt this technique, then you'll be able to do all of the others. So these are some of the materials you'll need. You'll need some scissors, some darning needles. So I've got one here that's been hand carved by my dad. And I've also got a thinner, sharper needle as well that you will also need for this weaving. Also inside here, you'll need a bangle and a selection of different types of yarns as well. So in here, I've got several different types of bangles. So we've got here a plastic type bangle. Now, if I just give that a squeeze, can you just see it? It gives a little bit, it just bends slightly. And while she could weave onto that, it might not be suitable because as we start to put the strands on or, and set up our weaving loom for our tree, it'll be under a little bit of pressure. And what might happen is that it bends out of shape. This one's quite good. When I give that a squeeze, can you see there's no give in that at all? And also it's got a pattern around the edge and it, oh, it almost will give a little bit of traction and friction for us to add our fibres to. So I'm going to use that one today. If you haven't got any bangles, I've got some alternatives here. This is an embroidery hoop. You could use the inside of your embroidery hoop. This is some willow from my garden. So what I do usually around about February time when the sap starts to rise, willow is really pliable. So I cut it down the second year growth and I make these hoops and I leave them on one side to season. This is off a um, kilner jar or a mason jar. So you could use that as well. So to get going, we're gonna prepare the bangle first of all. And what we're going to do first of all is wrap this fibre around the edge of the bangle. So what you could do is, for if you find it difficult to with your, your finger manipulation, you could just tie this off in a half knot and then start wrapping your fibre all the way around. Sometimes it leaves a little bit of a ridge. If you don't want to have a bit of a ridge at the beginning and the end, the other thing that you could do is get a peg or a clothes pin and just attach that and hold that in position. And then I'm just gonna wrap this around small. You notice this is a smaller ball of fabric as, uh, of yarn as well. Um, it's much easier to work with it than a, a big massive ball of yarn. And all I'm doing is wrapping that around the edge of the bangle just to cover it over. Of course you could, if you wanted to, just use the bangle as it is. You don't have to wrap it, but I do find that it makes it a little bit easier when you start attaching the fibres for the, the weaving loom. And you need to just keep going until you've filled the bangle up totally. So here I am at the end. We've fully wrapped the whole of the bangle. And then to secure it, what I'm going to do is put my finger on top, wrap the thread around, bring it through the hoop, and then pass that tail through that loop I've made with my finger and just pull that tight. So the next thing we're going to do is the main tree setup. So I've chosen here some uh, brown cotton, could use acrylic, uh, anything, wool if you wanted to, but the main thing you need to do is test it for snapping. So I'm giving it a really good pull and that's not gonna snap at all. If you've got fiber that snaps, you will run into trouble when you're setting this loom up. First of all, calculate how much thread I need to set up my loom. And I'm going to do that by wrapping this fibre around here 12 times. So I'm going to go down and up, and that's one wrap. Then two, three, four, 10, 11, 12, and a little bit more for good luck and then I'm going to snip it. And the reason I've done that is because we're going to be using this thread to set up the loom for our tree. And if I was using a big ball of yarn like that, it'd be really difficult for me to push that through that hoop all the time. Can you see we've got a little bit of an end there left over from when we was wrapping it round and round. So I'm just going to lie that end on top and I'm going to tie a knot with this new end. 
when I tie that knot I'm doing it can you see I'm doing it over that tail end of that bit that we use to wrap around the hoop and that means we can hold it even more securely in position with a real tight knot and then you'll notice also that there's a tail end here on this brown thread I can now cut this thread here that I used to, oops, that I used to wrap around the bangle because it's secured in position with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these fibres up and down. These are called warp threads in weaving, and I'm, I'm going to use the bottom. The, the bottom of the bangle is going to be the trunk of the tree and the top is going to be where the canopy is. So I'm going to almost fan out this warp thread to form our tree shape. The other thing I'm going to do is take this darning needle just to help me along the way. So I'm going to thread that at the other end. Just makes things a little bit easier. You can actually do it with your fingers though, you don't have to have a darning needle for this. So I'm going to go down to the bottom almost like cutting it in half and then we go back up to the top and I'm going to put it about half a centimetre to the side of where we started here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this fibre down and up around this strand here that's just gone out to the side. So I'm going down to the back Move that tail out of the way. And then I'm going to bring it back up to the front. So I'm almost making like a half hitch knot. So you can see I've gone down, around, and then I've wrapped it around the top of the bangle. Then I've gone underneath this strand here and wrapped it around the top. And I'm going to wrap it down to the bottom again here. And then I'm going to move it back to the top, but another half a centimetre across. And this time I'm going to wrap it from the back over the top of there. So from the back to the front. And then back down to the back again. So that's holding it in position. So I'm going to repeat that back down to the bottom and then half a centimetre to the side. And this time I'm going to go down to the back, bring it to the front and up and over. So we just take a moment to have a look at what we've done. So we're going down to the central point at the bottom and then a centimetre across with a half hitch and back down again, back up with a hitch, back down, back up. I'm going to repeat that until I've got six of these strands. So I've now got one, two, three, four, five, six strands. Now I can hear you asking, well, why are you putting a hitch knot, hit, hitch knot at the top? and not at the bottom and the reason for that is if I just wrap that around without that hitch knot, hitch knot, it'll slide down so it holds it firmly in position. Now I'm going to repeat that on this side. So this time I'm going to go up, move that little tail end out of the way, so over, bring it from the back to the front, over, down. I'm just putting that, can you see I'm putting that to the opposite side of here as well so it doesn't slide along. Down, up and over. So what we should be left with is six strands on each side, so 12 in total. Now I'm just going to bring that, that fibre, that thread there back up to the starting point 
the point so this is the tail that we started with at the beginning and what I'm going to do is tie that end piece to that tail piece about two centimeters from the top of the hoop and I'm going to snip that so there's about two centimeters of thread don't worry about this being here because we're going to weave that in later on so if we just take a moment to look at what we've got so far so we've got the weaving loom set up move that along a little bit and we've been going backwards and forwards and we've created two strands on each of these warp threads that are coming down and in total there'll be 12 pairs of those all the way round and already you can see it fanning out like a tree, a tree shape so looking at all of these fibres that are going down, all these warp threads, I'm going to count six across. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is the centre of the tree. So I've got here about an arm's length worth of thread. And I've, I've actually threaded it onto a, a pointed darning needle. So it's got a nice wide hole. You can use any needle, you can use a darning needle, a cruel needle. Uh, you could technically do this with your fingers as well, although it'd be quite tricky. I think it's much easier to do it with a needle. So starting in that space between, so I've got six on that side and six on that side. Starting in that space in between, I'm going to pull my thread through until there's about an inch left at the back and I'm going to hold that with my fingers. And then what I'm going to do now is go through to the back and then from the back I'm going to come up through that middle again and then this time I'm going to go through to the back on the opposite side and up through the middle again and I'm going to pull the thread really tightly and I'm also going to pull that tail end really tightly. I'm going to repeat that motion again. So down, through that right hand side, to the back, up through the middle, down to the back and then pull it really tightly. What you will notice is that you will be going in a figure of eight motion. So this is where we're putting tension on these warp threads and that's why it's important not to have a bangle that's going to bend easily. So keep pulling it tightly as you go along. You'll notice around about 1.5 to 2 centimetres you can't pull any further. Those fibres won't come together. And when that happens you can release your tension a little bit. Okay, hopefully you can see that under the camera, but can you see just there we've getting a, a trunk forming? So uh, this is one that's a little bit further along. So you can see that I've had added the tension on here, done it quite tightly so it was a nice straight line and then went with the curve of the tree uh, to, to create that sort of that V shape at the top. We're going to create um, the, the branches of the tree now. And I'm going to create three lots of branches. So if we go back to the original, can you see we've got three little branches here sectioning off into the tree canopy. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how to create these now. So at the beginning, we had 12 warp threads along here. So I'm going to divide these into thirds and I'm going to work with the first four strands here, first four double strands. And I'm going to do exactly the same motion that I was doing here on the tree. I'm going to do a figure of eight, but just on those first four strands. So I'm going to take my thread. So it's just literally come up through the middle here. I'm going to go down to the back. But this time, I'm going to come up through the middle of the first two and then I'm going to go down the opposite side of those two there up so I'm doing exactly the same but it's in a much miniature format because we're only working on four strands instead of all 12. I'll go for about half a centimetre to one centimetre again it's 
down to you how long you want those branches to be. So I've just started the branch there and I'm going to turn it over to the back and I'm going to push my needle down through those strands that have gone all the way round that branch. Just push them down to the bottom of the branch, bring the needle out and pull. So my needle is now at the back and now I'm going to move across and work on the next four strands. So I'm going to bring the needle up through the middle again of those four, wrap them around those two there, back up through the middle, back down. I'm doing exactly the same, that figure of eight motion and I'm going to keep going round and round creating the second branch until I get to one centimetre and then I'll do the same again, pass my needle down and then repeat that again on the last four strands. And that will leave us then with something that looks like this. And what we're left with is these 12 warp threads across the top. And next we're going to weave the tree canopy into these strands. The colour that I've chosen for my tree canopy, this is a lovely naturally dyed yarn. I've threaded that onto a darning needle again. And you'll notice we've got the tail ends here of where we tied it on, uh, tied it off at the beginning and the end of the, uh, when we were doing the warp threads. So I'm going to start right in the centre of the tree. I'm going to push that through. This is doubled up because it's very thin, but you don't have to. If you've got thick thread, then you don't need to double it up. I've only doubled it up because it's a very fine yarn. I'm going to push it, or oh, sorry, pull it. So we've got about an inch tail at the back, and I'll hold that down with my finger. And what I'm going to do now is weave in between these pairs. So I'm going to go down to the back. So with weaving, you're always going under and over. So that's gone over. And now it's going under that thread there. I'm going to bring it up. Then I'm going to go down the next one. So it's going over. And up from the back. To the next one. And down. And then up. And then we're going to go back across this again so this time I'm going around and down and then I'm going under this thread and what you will see is that on that previous row I went over that so now I'm going opposite I'm going under it Back at the beginning again. So I'm going to go opposite again. Now this time I'm just going to go under and bring it to the front. Make it a little bit faster and easier. What you can do as you're going along is you can push these fibres down as well. And by doing that, you hide the warp threads. So if your thread runs out, what I do is, so I get my needle and push it down the warp thread between these weft threads here that we're weaving with. Pull that down. And then just snip it off with the scissors. The beauty of weaving is it doesn't come undone. Not unless you snip the warp threads. And then to add your new strand of fiber, you just add it in where you left off so I go up up along those weft threads there just leave a little bit of a tail hanging out turn it back to the front and pick up where you left off so as I'm going along what you will notice is that these end warp threads will fill up first and when that happens what you need to do is 
start just wrapping it your starting end point being the next one along so you keep going backwards and forwards until eventually you end up with something that looks like this you can see there's a little bit of a gap there so we've just got to finish off weaving along there so I'm going to turn around here I don't need to go any further and come back back to the front it's just that little bit of a gap at the top to fill in and that's that's finished there we go completely full so to finish off again just going down those weft threads and snipping it off and there's the completed tree so the next thing you can do you can embellish it so you could put some beads you could put buttons on it you could leave it as it is um, I've got a little bit of red thread here so I'm going to stitch some apples on so again just going along those warp threads just to catch the tail and then just making some little stitches to make them look like apples there we go so that's how how you make these little miniature woven trees I'm just going to bring back these four again just to explain a little bit about how I achieved some of these so for the, for the winter one what I did here was I, I branched out, I did that first three branches but I actually wrapped the fibre around and then I split them even further so I got I went down to two here and then down to one wrapping the thread around to give the illusion of bare tree branches and then I just stitched a little bit of um, cream uh, wool onto these branches to give it the illusion of uh, snow falling on the tree and then I've wrapped some um, some sheep's wool around the bottom there for the snowfall for this one the blossom one so I've got some thread here this was a baby cardigan that I made for someone and it's got little bits of pink in it um, I didn't weave it like I did this one I actually did French knots so I actually knotted those onto the branches um, you will also notice can you see how this isn't quite a round shape that's because the bangle I thought it was strong enough but it wasn't so the tension pulled it up a little bit but I still quite like it and that looks as good on the back as it does on the front this one here autumn was done in exactly the same way as the summer one but I had this wonderful thread here um, that had what looked like little little leaves on them in autumnal, autumnal colours but you could again do a green, um, a green canopy and stitch or embroider some uh, leaves on to give it that autumnal look the other thing you could do, you could actually scale it up and here's something, this is a work in progress, I haven't finished this yet, but this is uh, based on a walk on Hadrian's wall. So this is Hadrian's wall here and in the middle is a sycamore tree. This is called the sycamore gap. Um, so my uh, weaving is based on a walk that we had uh, up to the sycamore gap tree, which was famous in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And what I've done here is I started with my thread going across and I actually used the warp threads to create this scooped out shape here and then made my warp threads up and down and then wove the weft threads there and then eventually added the tree. And what I'm going to do is use something like this textured yarn here to make my tree canopy. It will get finished one day. So lots and lots of possibilities of things that you can do um, with uh, circular weaving.